right, y'all, so welcome back to another one. So I'll just uh, splitting up a little firewood today here. Getting really close to time of needing it. And uh, yeah, just a little after work uh, wind down, if you will. Anyway, hey, if y'all are interested in some, uh, some new merch, we got t-shirts and hoodies at uh, Hoosier Trapper Supply. I'll leave a link down below. All right, so real quick, before we get in, trapping season is approaching very quickly. Uh, for a lot of states it's in the Midwest and uh, everybody's asking what are we trapping what are we selling this year so I thought I'd I'd do a short video here on let you guys know kind of what I'm hearing uh, and what I'm going to be targeting this year going into this trapping season so first things first let's just get this out of the way if you're going to be in in trapping to make millions or in it to to think you're going to you know, have prices that were eight years ago or whatever, you know, just forget about it, right? It's just not there. Uh, you gotta understand that trapping has its highs and lows and we're in the low right now. Uh, I think it's hilarious. I hear people, oh, I'm not gonna trap because of, uh, of low fur prices, you know. Well, how much did you spend to go, uh, you know, deer hunting this year, you know? And you're not getting any return on that. I, I think it's hilarious anyway. Uh, I will be trapping just as ever. Um, I'm changing my, I'll be changing my, uh, you know, my ways a little bit this year. You know, it won't be a 500 coon year. It'll be, uh, you know, kind of focusing on specific species and what I have to sell and, and different things like that. So anyway, uh, as far as kind of what the, the word around the, uh, the break room is, so right now, Gronwalds has done a great job of coming up with uh, a market for beaver over the summer. So there is a market for beaver. Uh, basically, what I gather is they are buying beaver on in the round on the carcass, and uh, you know they've they've got a, a meat market, a skull market. They're taking caster, they're taking the fur, they're taking everything. So there is a market for beaver. So Gronwalds actually came out the other day and and said they will be buying coons this year, Midwest Prime coons, uh, emphasis on prime, right? So uh, as for me, what I'll be doing is I will, um, you know, I'll be waiting to trap the prime stuff. Uh, depending on where you're at, sometimes, you know, your state's open trapping season in, in pretty accordance to how fur is primed up. A lot of the northern states, they open a little earlier and your fur is not quite prime. Um, you know, but yeah, definitely wait. And if you're going to trap, definitely wait and trap the prime fur. So you've got, uh, you know, you've got the coons that you, you will be able to sell. Um, you will be able to sell, you know, the prices are not going to be great, but you will be able to sell them, uh, this year, especially from the, the Midwest, that, that kind of prime area anyway. Uh, you know, don't expect to get a ton of them for beaver. There's going to be a market for caster prices right now are through the roof. Uh, and then, some of the stuff you don't hear about is is the stuff that I'm going for this year. Uh, you know, skunks again are always a a super valued fur. Um, so I will be targeting skunks same as I did last year. Uh, I've got I've got a lot of different furs spread out. So so my focus this year is not to to trap huge numbers and sell just the fur. Um, I've spent uh, the good portion of the summer building up different markets to where I can get rid of a lot of fur through different markets. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you guys that because I, you know, they're pretty, pretty lucrative markets, but it's there if you want to go out and find it. You know, that's one of those deals. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there looking for 10, 20, 30 pieces of fur that may want, you know, a good clean silver possum or a, a true two two white stripes skunk or a black skunk or you know uh, a color phase coyote or or a cinnamon coon or something you know there is a lot of different markets out there if you actually try uh if you're the guy that's just going to go out there and trap them and just take them to the to the fur buyer no you're probably going to be disappointed uh there's no reason to not get out there and trap but there is definitely a a market still out there if you kind of diversify yourself a little bit and uh you know that's what i've been doing over the last couple of years and i've i'm sitting quite comfortable actually going into this year i i know exactly what i need to trap where i can sell it how to get rid of it it's taken some work uh you know but i i feel very comfortable in in knowing what i can trap in what numbers i can trap and i i assure you i will have no problem getting rid of every piece of fur that i trap this year 
it just takes a little bit more work and a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit extra time to find those markets, but it, it's definitely there. Um, so, you know, uh, Midwestern Coons, they're going to sell even for the fur market. Beaver, Gronwalds have done a great job. Fur harvesters is still kind of up in the air. I mean, they, they're trying, but you know, with everything going on in the world, it, it's just tough. Um, I, I applaud Gronwald for what they're doing because they are trying to come up with markets. Coyotes, it's going to be real regional, I think. You're going to be able to sell them, but, uh, you know, from what I'm hearing, uh, you know, it, it's it's not going to be the prices that you have seen. Obviously, you know, you're higher in Western, uh, you know, critters. There's always going to be a, a, a market for those, you know, your bobcats and, and things like that. Uh, foxes are down, uh, drastically down. That being said, I have come up with quite a little bit of taxidermy market for foxes. So, you know, there is still a market for foxes. Uh, you, like I said, you just have to kind of kind of work uh you know, do your homework and, and work it up. But I, I found some markets for those as well. Um, muskrats, I, muskrats, I think are going to sell. I really do. I think even in the fur trade, I think if you're wanting to trap muskrats, I think uh, fur harvesters is going to get rid of them. Uh, Gronwald's going to get rid of them. You know, there's a lot of county buyers that aren't buying this year, but you got to kind of, like I said, you got to diversify and look abroad. So anyway, um, you know, another thing to consider at, at, at least, the, you know, from my point of view, is the simple fact that with nobody trapping the last few years, uh, we had such a drought in this area, a dry summer. We did not have distemper run through like it traditionally would. This should have kind of been on the distemper cycle. The populations right now of of coons and and skunks and possums in my area are high or as high or higher than I've ever seen them. Um, I have had more calls over the summer about nuisance problems than I have had in recent memory, right? So, you know, the, the funny thing, whenever fur prices are, are low, nobody traps, everybody's still deer hunting and everybody's still turkey hunting, but nobody's running around getting that small game like it did. So there's almost an imbalance. Um, you know, I've had a lot of calls about crop damage and things like that. So, you know, there is something to be said about population management. Uh, I see it a lot here simply because, you know, where I live in my area, I'm kind of, I would consider myself in an area that is semi-populated. You know, we've got a lot of subdivisions coming in and they'll go down and they'll, you know, they'll doze off a of fence row and they'll, they'll build a bunch of houses and them critters are still there, right? And then you, those are the people that's calling you because, that you know, a coyote comes up and grabs their dog off the back porch or coons get into their, their garbage or things like that, you know? So uh, there is something to be said about population management on that end, as well as just the simple fact that there's still a lot of deer and turkey being killed, you know? So as far as like the ground, ground nesting predators and things like that, there's, there is something to be said about just managing the populations and, you know, not having distemper run through like it traditionally did this year with it being so dry. Uh, I, you're going to have a population boom. And whenever you have that, it's going to be, you know, rabies, distemper, uh, different diseases like that. So if you're not trapping for the fur, trap to help everything else out. Um, uh, you know, there's still ways to get rid of it. I, 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 I encourage you to search around. There are a lot of different markets out there. There's craft markets. There's, um, I, you know, I've got more essence sold than I can get this year, basically. There's essence markets, caster markets. Um, there is there's a lot of opportunity out there to, to sell for. Are you gonna make millions at it? No, you're not. Um, but, you know, even, <laughs> Even with high fuel prices, I'm going to have no problem still making money this year uh, selling fur. So, you know, which I think says a lot whenever, you know, gas is $5 a gallon. You know, like I said, it just took a little bit more uh, time on my end to find those markets. Uh, another huge thing that I think gets way overlooked is if you're trapping a few numbers of fur, learn how to tan them yourself. I've got a, videos on tanning them. You, there's tons of videos on YouTube or send them out to be tanned. It is so cool to have your man cave or living room or, you know, whatever kind of decorated with fur. Uh, if you want to try it yourself, you can learn a new skill, make a hat, you know, make a vest, make a throw, do something. But yeah, uh, I think that's a really overlooked market and it, it's super fun, you know, especially, um, you know, the market with the, uh, if you send your furs out to be tanned and then you come back with your kids or kind of, you could turn it into a family affair. 
and uh, you know make some cool things out of fur. So anyway, that's that's what I got for you guys. That's what I'm hearing right now. Um, like I said, in general, yes, fur prices are going to be down. Are there still markets for your fur? Absolutely. Um, I can tell you right now, in the year 2022 to 2023, I will still make money selling fur. So that's gonna kind of wrap it up for me. That's that's what I've got for you guys. That's kind of what I've been hearing around the loop, and you know, thought I would share with you guys what I know going into season. Um, by the time this video probably gets aired, there'll probably be some some states already trapping. So anyway, like I said, make sure your prime is fur before you trap it. Um, you know, you can go out and set a few sets and skin that stuff. Make sure you've got that that good prime fur. It's easy to tell whether it's blue or white. Um, I would highly recommend staying. Staying away from the unprimed fur, especially if you're going to sell for the for the fur market. But like I said, I encourage you guys to to, to search around, find different markets. It's there, y'all. You just have to look for it. So uh, leave a comment down below if uh, if you've got something that that I kind of overlooked. I'd be curious to hear what you guys are planning to do with your fur this year. Like I said, it's there, and uh, you know, go out and enjoy it if nothing else. So. Anyway, uh, like I said, if you're looking for merch, check out Hoosier Trapper Supply. There'll be a link right below this video, and uh, you can pick you up some uh, some nice t-shirts or hoodies or whatnot. Um, trapping season is getting going. I've got my uh, my anchor cable and my uh, beaver drowner cable too. If you guys are looking for something like that, we're gonna start running a bunch of them whenever season opens. So look forward to that. But anyway, I'm gonna finish splitting up some of this firewood. Um, I got I got a little ways to go yet, but. It's not quite super cold, but anyway, as always, y'all, I appreciate the view, and we'll see you on the next one.